Freakers Ball. Uh, we are live right here on RealLibertyMedia.com on this Christmas night, 2020. Hopefully, y'all had yourselves a wonderful Christmas. And, you know, for those of you that do that thing. Those of you that don't, hopefully, just had a good day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. We're live right here on RealLibertyMedia.com. And uh, for the audio stream over there on RLMRadio.xyz, for the video stream, you can go to Vaughn.live slash RealLibertyMedia and uh, tune in right there. And you can join me in the wonderful Moose Girl <laughs> right here on the Freakers Ball Christmas show, Christmas special. How you doing, Moose? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? I don't hear you. Why don't I hear you? We connected? Yeah, we're connected. Hello? Oh, there you are. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So. You uh, ate some good food? Well, I ate some more of that ham that I made yesterday, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, For yeah. Sure. <laughs> Always better the next day. I, I don't uh, maybe um, yeah and it was just as good. it was just as good I don't know if it's better but no. yeah no I uh, made a couple extra baked potatoes there and and served up some some ham big old ham slices and and uh, some olives and that was that was uh, lunch basically nice <laughs> yeah and so i'll be doing that for a while well i probably won't be doing baked potatoes all the way through but you know no uh, it, it'll make nice sandwiches and uh, uh whatever all kind of ham and eggs uh ham omelet <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a little big ass ham you know not that big actually it's about eight eight nine pounds uh well, but decent that, though it's, it's a for large, one person yeah it's a large, so i got you know half of it in the freezer and and the bone, I'll, I'll, I'm saving the bone to make some, uh, you know, Davy Bean soup there. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. Yeah, so that was good. How about cool. yourself? Did you have a nice uh, meal? No. No. Oh. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. <laughs> Not a good meal. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> no, I no. did not. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, that's cool. I think we know why. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, did you have a nice Christmas overall, you, the boys? Uh... Oh, the boys weren't here. I didn't go anywhere or do anything. So oh, but didn't they come by last it night? It was nice. What? Didn't, didn't they come by last night? Well, before they left yesterday, they came back during the day. Oh, okay, okay. So you had your Christmas yesterday. Well, yeah, if you want to call it that. Well, I, well whatever. <laughs> you, you gave them gifts, right? I gave them some gifts, correct. Okay, so that's your Christmas. All right. <laughs> it wasn't much, trust me. <laughs> all right, all right. And did you receive anything? Oh, I got some money from my mom and dad. That's about it. That's cool. That's cool. The boys, boys that's get better you... than the kicking the teeth. Yeah, or lack of teeth. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have but, teeth now. Uh, but but did, you, <laughs> did, uh, did the boys get you anything? No. Nothing. All right. They don't, they don't have no money, dude. Well, I know, but they could have, like, made a card. You asked or... me that last year. I, I, well, Same that was answer. last year. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably be 30 before they get me anything for Christmas. Uh, okay, well, I got all kinds of crap for my... Oh, that's good. ...friends and family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quite the bounty. <laughs> nice. And, what all did you get, Graham? And, and, and they all knew I wasn't going to be sending anything out because, like your boys, I have yeah. no money. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I That's got... an understandable problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got, I got that bass guitar, which is yep, yep. awesome. And, um, That's awesome, yeah. And also... and Oh, I, that's from my little brother. Okay. That, that's who sent that. I, I was wondering who sent it. I thought maybe sis, but no, it was bro. 
Um, oh, cool. And and this little uh, this little distortion box, well, it's got other effects built into it too. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like a pedal thing. Uh, yeah, it's got two two pedal switches. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so you're gonna uh, be up there with Billy Strings pretty soon, Grim. Well, he could play. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge difference. Uh, but but anyway, I'm thinking I'm thinking that uh, bass guitar is really the way to go for me. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah bass is cool. Yeah, it's, it's you know you know the bass is like he's the timekeeper. It's the beat. He's the timekeeper, and yep, it's, it's, it's very beat, yep. it's very it's very mathematical and um, logical. And uh, as I I think I've I've been you know. Playing with guitar for a long last time and never really learned how to play anything decent. Right, right. But I think with the bass, I might, you know, I could, I could be adequate. Good. <laughs> I'll never be great, but I, I could be adequate. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, my friend Jeannie, she sent me the uh, this light kit that I was looking for for my oh, um, cool. for my for my uh, kitchen ceiling lights. Oh, okay. It, it converts the it converts the fluorescence into oh. LEDs. Okay. Yeah, so that's nice, and and she also yeah. sent me, she also sent me that uh, can opener that uh, we were looking at before. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, electric one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's I don't have electric to. Electric one. Okay, good. Yeah. I don't, I don't have to struggle opening a can now. And then you don't have to worry about batteries. Right, right, and it and also that's comes. A plug in, obviously, yeah. Uh, also comes with a uh, the jar opener thingy and the. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that was a cool one. Yeah, and the, and the slide. I don't know what the hell you call it. Um, oh, my little brother also sent me uh, mm-hmm. this corner sander I'd been looking at. Um, okay. It's for you know getting into tight corners, but it's a it's a big full uh, you know uh, what do you call those sanders that are I forget the name of them. Belt sander. Nope, nope, nope. Not a belt sander. Uh, what do they call them? Reciproc- no, not reciprocating. Uh, something like that though. Anyway, it's just okay. cool. It's okay. a cool sander. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. What else? And you wanted that for? Uh, uh, for tile work. I need. I need to do some tile work. Palm sander. Except it's palm bigger. Palm sander. There's except it, it's bigger than a palm sander, uh, but it works like okay. the palm sander. Uh, okay. But, it, but it's got the. It comes to a nice point for getting into corners. Orbiter. Orbiter. Orbital. Yeah, that's cool. Orbital sander. That's it. Orbiter. Uh, oh, okay. Orbit, yeah, I've seen those. Orbital. Yes. Um, yeah. Those and, are cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what else? Did I, oh, oh, oh! The, uh, did, did I ever show you the thing called the mandel? Uh, I don't know. All right. Well, it's this little uh, deal. Doesn't ring a bell. Okay. All, all it is is it's for you put it onto a, a faucet valve where there's no handle. Okay. And it's got these three screws that you know at, at different places that or three. Okay. Whatever. And so you put it on there, and you can, and you can use that. To to open the, the valve on those things that have no handle on them, and I have a couple of those, and uh, I never bought it because I I mean it wasn't that much. It was like well, twelve bucks or something. Yeah. I thought, well, that's stupid. I ain't paying that much for that. I'll just put it in my wish list. Okay. And, I, and I did. A co- I put it in there a couple of years ago. <laughs> anyway, so I think my sister sent me that, and I don't know some other stuff. Anyway, all kinds of crap. I got I got more crap. Than I could ever even imagine to hope for. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have these people that I don't know. I guess they care. Maybe, maybe they. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. <laughs> it's, <weird. laughs> it's not weird, Grim. It's yeah. not a foreign concept. <laughs> anyway, so I talked to my brother and his wife and yeah. and, and okay. the nieces, my nieces. How old are they? Uh, oh, nine and kids are old. old nine, nine, nine and twelve. Oh, okay. So still kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still kids. Um, and apparently, the reason mm-hmm. my brother sent me that base, yeah, was his daughter Kaylee mm-hmm. said, "Buy him that." <laughs> well, that's a cool little niece, man. It is. It is, and she uh, <laughs> uh, apparently is kind of like a hermit as well. As, like you, uh, unsociable anyway, or anti, you know, doesn't uh-huh. like doesn't like, does, yeah. does, doesn't like being around people, and she wants to learn to play the bass. <laughs> well, that's awesome. It is. She sounds like a cool kid. I've never met her. Well, actually, yeah, that's great. Actually, I did meet her once, but she was an infant. But anyway, I haven't seen them since then. 
haven't been back out to San Diego. So, right, right. Anyway, so yeah, whatever. It was uh, all kinds of great stuff. Yep. Talk yeah, to, cool. Talk to my well, friend. Well, you prob- she's probably channeled, gets that attitude or whatever from you. Right? Well, there is some genetic material. Yeah, yeah, because with my with my niece Kelly, my oldest niece. Yeah. My brother swears it's me. Like she's me. <laughs> like yeah, she he swears that she's just like me. So well, it, you know the apple doesn't far fall far, far fall far from the tree. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, Beth says leave it to her when the time comes. Well, see that she'll she'll have one. She'll have one and probably fairly soon. Uh, oh they, yeah. They, my brother and his wife do very very well. Um, mm-hmm. for themselves. So if the kid wants something, the kid gets something. That, that's pretty much how that goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't want to call them spoiled, but I don't know. Right. What, I don't know another word for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, they're, they're uh, they, they do all right. Um, and and uh, so uh, yeah, I, I might need to meet her. You know, now that yeah, she's, that now that, cool. now that she's not an infant and. Right. And she seems to actually have a conversation with you. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. I remember when I when I was, when she was I don't know, a few months old, like I guess. Mhm. Um, and I was out there in San Diego for Who was it? My mother's funeral or my stepfather, one of those two. It was for a funeral. Um uh-huh. a- anyway, so so we went to uh my brother's house after that. Um and and his wife I'm sitting there in this chair talking to some uh-huh. people there. And his wife walks up to me with this baby in her arms. Yeah. And hands her to me. Oh my god. And I'm like uh, and I'm like I'm like holding this thing, you know, out like it's away like you from don't know my, how to hold it. Away from my body, you know, like one right, one hand right. on oh my god. One, one hand on each side and I'm like, What the hell do I do with this? <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can but, picture it. I can picture uh, it. I'm sure. I'm sure there was fear in my eyes. I'm but, sure. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's great. Take it back. <laughs> Here you go. I don't want this thing. And she's she's just standing there laughing. Why at you me. Hand, the, hand this thing to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. So anyway, um, so that was that was Christmas. Yeah, great, good old yeah. time. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's tons of tons of uh, videos how to play bass uh, on the YouTube's there. So uh, I, right. already, I already got one queued up out there on Barman's computer. That's because I play out there in the living room. Um, uh, on uh, how to do the uh, some some blues riffs, uh, bass blues riffs. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, there's tons of them on there, so I can learn all kinds of stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, what else? Anything else? You got anything else? Not really. Not right now. Okay. Well, let's kick it off with some jams right. here. Some a, X Christmas show. X mass jams. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy almost the end of 2020. Right. And all that happy stuff. Happy, happy, happy. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah. Run, run, Rudolph. Uh, anyway, no, that was uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas by Leo Maraccioli and Frog Leap. Uh, <laughs> Leo, man, he cracks me up. All right, anyway, before that, Joe Bonamassa doing the Christmas boogie. And we kicked it off there with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers doing Christmas all over again. How, 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 how. Christmas <laughs> never again. Well, I didn't leave it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, I understand. Uh... What? I understand. So, it was Christmas morning. Today, this morning. Yeah, this morning. And all the bars and restaurants are closed. It's Christmas, right? Right. In Nashville, downtown. Right. And about 6.30, well, 6 o'clock, this call comes in for shots fired. 
And then an RV is discovered that's playing a recording that says evacuate. This is going to blow up in 15 minutes, which it didn't. It was later than that, but uh, then it, the, a bomb detonated at 640, and it pretty much wreaked havoc. Yes. And they didn't find one set of human remains. Right, which so is... So that's about what I know right now. It did, it, or besides, it did bring down 911 and cause Wi-Fi and cell outages. Right. So that's going to be interesting to see what comes of that. Oh. Um, people in the chat have been talking today, and they've been doing research. Apparently, there's some garage underneath the street there. Or, service. Uh... Yeah. area service something. tunnel service tunnel kind of place so it, we don't know you know and then someone pointed out in chat frumpy you know if they're focusing our attention on this what are they doing elsewhere you know what i mean right um i saw an interview with the mayor of nashville early this morning or the, earlier today okay and uh I don't know if he was just nervous or had nervous energy or had adrenaline, but he was basically laughing when he was talking to the press or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't like, what is up with that dude? He's a creep. Yeah. Um, it's almost like he kind of was downplaying it and was la he laughed like a few times. Um, so what's this? No, let me just click that. So there's the Daily Mail link on that. Um, other people are saying Adam Schiff has been arrested. Yeah, apparently. And I don't know what to think about that one. I saw a little blurb on um, Twitter, but and he has nothing to do with the national thing. That's not even connected. It's just that rumor is going around right now. Online. Right. Anyway, um, I clicked this link. Joel Colangelo. Someone is practicing for a larger attack on telephone switching centers. Um, smart friend. Someone did an Ocean's Eleven style heist on Christmas Day. The only way to disable the target security system was to disrupt AT&T regionally. So I don't know what that what he's referring to exactly, but um, yeah, they haven't uh, that link now has been updated to say they did find rema human remains, but I guess we, that's what they're saying. Human remains have been discovered. Out least, near the site of a bomb rigged RV well, that exploded I, I, outside AT&T. What? I, I'm assuming that those human remains is uh, kind of like particulate matter left over from the guy that, that drove the RV there and that, that he blew himself up with it. Probably. That's 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 my thought on it, but uh Yeah, that that makes sense. Um Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, it's weird that they were playing that recording. Like someone went to a lot of trouble to get this set up here, you know. Um, right, right. And it was in front of an AT&T building, and uh, yeah, there's the, this link from uh, from AP. Okay. Um, downtown Nashville explosion knocks communications offline. Uh, okay. And I think it was what five or six people injured. Uh, I I heard three, but it could be more by now. All right. So anyway, this is an RV parked in uh, the deserted streets of downtown Nashville exploded. Early Christmas morning, causing widespread communications outages that took down police emergency systems and grounded holiday travel at the city's airport, which I don't know how far the airport is from this, but that seems a little extreme to shut down the airport over something yeah. that didn't happen at the airport. Um, anyway, so the police were responding to reports of shots fired when they encountered the RV blaring the recorded warning that a bomb would detonate in 15 minutes. 
Metro Nashville Police Chief John Drake said, Police evacuated nearby buildings and called the bomb squad. Uh, the RV exploded shortly afterward. Drake said, This morning's attack on our community was intended to create chaos and fear in this season of peace and hope. Hope? Really? Okay. Uh, uh, but Nashvillians have proven time and time again that the spirit of our city cannot be broken. And apparently there's a hashtag going around, Nashville strong, you know, like they did with Boston and crap. Right, um, right, right. Uh, Mayor John Cooper said at the news conference after issuing the curfew for the area, uh, police believe the blast was intentional. Well, since they told you about it ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, this whole intentional thing, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but mm -hmm. all of these various uh, articles and posts and whatever, mm -hmm. they all have intentional in quotes. Right, like, right. Like, well, what does that mean? Was it not, yeah. <laughs> uh, was it not intentional? Uh, right. I, 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 it obviously there, was there, intentional. There, there's something weird about the way this is coming out, about that word intentional and, and the way it's being yeah. pushed forth on us. Uh, anyway, there is an, a um, civil emergency proclaimed <clears throat> within the boundary uh, by James Robinson Park Parkway, 4th Avenue North, Broadway, and the Cumberland River. Curfew will start at 4.30 p.m. December 25th and be lifted Sunday, December 27th at 4.30 p.m. Okay. Uh, anyway, it says the, the chief investigators at the scene have found tissue. Mm -hmm that we believe could be human remains. Oh, okay. But we'll have that examined and let you know. It's like, so it's like not much left of whatever person or other thing may have been exploded right. with that. Um, right. Police could not say whether they potentially came from someone inside the RV. So I, I think whoever it was, he stayed in the RV and blew himself up. I don't, I don't know, but whatever. That's my thought. Uh, three people yeah. three people were taken to area hospitals for treatment, were in stable condition. Uh, surveillance video published on Twitter account Friday that appeared to be across the street from the blast captured the warning issuing from the RV. If you can hear this message, evacuate now seconds before, well, minutes before the explosion, actually, but it says here seconds. But uh, Yeah, it, they thought it was... Going on for like a half hour of the recording. Or yeah, something. and the recording was still going on when when the thing blew up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was. Yep. The, bl the blast sent black smoke and flames billowing from the heart of downtown Nashville's tourist scene, uh, an area packed with honky tonks, restaurants, and shops, all closed down by the governor. Uh, uh, buildings shook and windows shattered streets away from the explosion. Uh, near a building owned by AT and T that lies, uh, one uh, that lies one lies on maybe I don't know one block from the company's office tower, a landmark in downtown. Uh, yeah, it's this huge building with these big old antennas sticking up from the top of it. Um, they look like horns or something. It's like a devil building. Uh, and <laughs> we we do not know if this was a coincidence or if that was the intention. Uh, police spokesman said. He said earlier that some people were taken to the department's central precinct for questioning, but declined to give details. Uh, probably the guy in his hmm. dog, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Because there was a guy standing outside of that one lobby where the film or the uh, video was from. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, that uh, he was out there when he was he'd been walking his dog, and he lived in the next building over. So. Um, Wow. Anyway, that that lobby where they were it was that that didn't take much damage. Um, so uh, I guess the blast went out the other direction, and they just got some of the the blowback or something. Uh, right. But, but you saw hit it's that. It's a mess, though. And they also showed a video from inside that guy's lobby, the of his apartment building where he lived, and right. it and it blew the doors open, but it didn't like mm -hmm. shatter any glass or anything, and then and then the doors just closed again. Um, so I guess Joey B lives there. And he got footage on his security cam too. Yeah, yeah. But um, what was I say? oh, so Frumpy posted a link that there was an active shooter in Miami. Okay. And that was uh, nine minutes after we started the show. Um, 
right. And now I'm seeing an active shooter is reported at Texas Hotel as cops swarm building and guests are told to lock themselves in their rooms. All right. Police in Grapevine, Texas, are responding to reports of an active shooter. The Great Wolf Lodge was placed on lockdown, and guests were urged not to leave their rooms as officers swarmed the building. Um, a, a guest at the lodge raised the alarm, and cops began to swarm the building at around 9.45 p.m., placing some rooms in lockdown. But anyway, this just happened at... 9.45, so 15 minutes before we start our show. So this is an ongoing thing here. The Miami thing, not sure on that one. But uh, let me get you a link on that. All right. Yeah, let's go on a little bit here on this thing because it was talking, yeah, sure. about, yep. Yep. It was talking about the communications being knocked out. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, this says the AT&T said the affected building is the central office of a telephone exchange with network equipment in. The blast interrupted service, but the company declined to say how widespread the outages were. AT&T outages site showed service issues in Middle Tennessee and Kentucky. Several police agencies reported their 911 systems were knocked down uh, because of the outage, including Knox County, home to Knoxville, about 180 miles uh, east of Nashville. AT&T said it was bringing in portable cell sites and was working with law enforcement to get access to make repairs to its equipment. So, not that big of a communications outage. So, if their goal was, uh, I mean, fairly, you know, large, but not not as big as, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It, it, it seems like they could have gone, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's like a central hub or whatever, Um but, I'm not yeah. sure, but... Yeah, let's take a look at this Daily Mail thing here on the active shooter of Texas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this happened... It's ongoing right now. I mean, I'm going to look up a... Uh, yeah, Great Texas Wolf... Texas News. What the hell is the Great Wolf Lodge? It's, uh, they have one in Wisconsin Dells. It's this huge hotel and resort with, like, a water park in it. They're big. They're really... They're huge hotels. Like, huge, huge. And, and they're open and operating? Uh, as far as I know, I don't know about the, the water park part of it, Yeah. but, um, it is Christmas. A lot of people, you know. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would imagine down there in Texas, it's quite different here in New Mexico, all that. Oh, stuff. I'm sure it is. Yeah. And it's everything's shut down here. So, um, let's see, uh, sports the grapevine, there. Texas. Yeah, I have no idea where that is. Um. Uh, I'm not sure either what area that is either. I've heard of it, but I don't know where. Yeah. What part? Kate might know. But I don't. That's the only thing I see. I don't see anything on Texas news stations. Yeah. I only see the Nashville thing. Um, Houston. Okay, so they didn't throw everybody out. Some rooms are on lockdown as a precaution. Yes. So they they didn't throw everybody out of the lodge, hotel, whatever. Not yet. Um, I haven't heard anything. I mean, when stuff's unfolding when we're on air, it's kind of sucky because we can't really. No, it's hard. It's hard to. Yeah, it's hard to know. So. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I just thought I, I thought it interesting that just before we go on air, there's an active shooting event in Miami. And I'm looking at this thing, and I see there's an active shooter in Texas now, too. It's like, what is going on? Uh, I mean, people, it's Christmas. People are freaking out. Yeah. I get it. And people are, I don't know, stressed out, I guess is the word. Or some people are desperate because of their situation. Uh, I get it. You know, mentally, people are not handling this shit well at all. So, no, no, they are certainly not. So, I, I, some guy, one of the comments on that Miami link says, yeah. Un "Unfortunately, this is pretty common in Miami, South Florida." Probably, you know. <laughs> so. um, I just, and you know, people aren't gonna, like, okay. So on Facebook today, there's this girl that. Her parents live here in Eau Claire, and she's on her way to move to California or something. Yeah. 
and she's staying at a Motel 6 overnight, right? Or some hotel, I don't know which one. Yeah. And she goes out and takes a picture of her. She checked on her vehicle, and then she goes in to take a shower and get ready to leave. Right. She comes out, and her whole trailer's gone. Wow. With all her stuff in it. Jeez. And it's like, you heartless bastards. Well, that, that, that is unfortunately a very common thing, at least in Albuquerque. Um, uh, you hear about... I, I don't know how can you prevent that. They they have a way of getting breaking them hitches, Grim. Sure, yeah. I mean, you can put the locks on the hitch to, to keep it on there and, yeah. and, the, and the locks on the chains, but those are easy to cut. Um, I, yeah. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, the, so, I remember one uh, a few years back now, uh, somebody stole a horse trailer with the tra- the horses in it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, at a motel, and these mostly happen at motels. Uh, right. These, these, these people, you know, go up and, oh, there's a trailer we can sell that. Oh, there's horses we can sell those to. Uh, other people uh, actually, that other people uh, yeah. that are, that are like moving like from California to Colorado, and they stop in Albuquerque, right. and they have everything in their trailer, all of their. Uh. Furniture and belongings, and they and it. Oh, well, this is part of the problem, Grim. I didn't get the whole story right. Okay. She was at a hotel in Bakersfield, California. Oh, yeah. Moving uh, to Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, and she's a musician, and her instruments are in there. Yeah, and if you've ever been, if if you've ever been to Bakersfield, you realize Mm -hmm. that's probably very common. Probably, but you know, you're being from the Midwest, and I hate to say this because it's so stereotypical, but seriously, um, you, what was I going to say now? I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, Midwest people, we have like this attitude, this nice thing, you know, that you have to be nice and trusting, and you know, so when when people like that, Go to places like California where it's not like that, right, Grim? Right. Generally not. I mean, not like it is in the Midwest, okay? Yeah. I mean, I get in trouble with some people on this, but... Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you can just tell when people are from, like, a small town in Wisconsin or they're from, like, a big city in California, okay? Right, and right. So this girl, I'm fortunate that it happened... You know, she probably thought, oh, it's Christmas. You know, I, I'm sure it was probably locked up and everything. Yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, it's been, this is devastating because she's a musician trying to move, start a new life in Arizona, and uh, this happens. It's like, ugh. Yeah, let's hope her insurance covers all that. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's wild. But, yeah, I mean... That's a bummer. I mean, and like these people, like Rome said one time in the chat, he, you know, because we were talking about living out of your van, out of a van or a vehicle, right? Yeah. Well, if that's all your worldly possessions and everything, and you lock that up and you leave it somewhere and you go do something else, you you still run the risk of it being gone when you come back. Oh, absolutely. Well, you, yeah, know, you know, they 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 got those what they call them uh, porch pirates, you know. That, oh yeah, that yeah. They, they they follow around like the UPS truck, and, they and, do, yeah. and just go up and grab all people's shit off their porches. Um, so I, right. I, I mean, people are just scum. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, yeah. when I'm when I first came out here, the first time I visited Moriarty, mm-hmm. um, it was like, is this the same planet? Are they, are they, right. I mean, because the people culture thing, yeah. People were friendly. They were nice. They were yeah. Uh, in San Diego, you know, uh, maybe you go into a store or a restaurant or something, and they're just freaking rude to you. And they, they don't care about you. They don't want you. They don't care if your business right, comes right. out. But out here, you know, it's a whole, it's, it's just a, another culture. And um, so uh, it was so nice getting out of San Diego. Uh, well, I just got it. <laughs> well, yeah, I and mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, Midwest people are, like, more trusting or something. Well, you know, I don't think it's I, I and more helpful. So it like it it goes both ways. Like, but, but, you know what I mean? But but even when I was living in San Diego, um, if if you drive up to the mountains to some of these smaller towns, the uh, people are cool. Yeah, you know, yeah, Ju- yeah. Julian, Ramona, 
uh, Alpine. Well, all, it's just all, the big. It's the big city because, and I've heard this before, and Larry's talked about this. It's too much concrete. You can't ground yourself. I guess, yeah. And a big city. No, it, it is true, though. Greg. Well, I mean, people have backyards and there's parks and stuff. You could ground yourself. Right, but not as not like when you're living out in a rural area. I bet you know. You know yeah. what I mean? It, you know. Right, right, yeah. It's because it, it's very limited in the city where, where you know. You yeah, got, yeah. You got these little so it, postage stamp size lots all stuck next to each other. It'll mess with your head. That's all I'm saying. It can. I'm. I'm just saying. People think it sounds stupid, right? Right, right. But it's not. It, it, it's a real thing. You know, they call it a concrete jungle for a reason, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, it's all buildings and concrete, and there's no, like, green space, hardly, you know? Right. And that will play on your, in your play on you as a human. Like, it sounds really corny, but it's Christmas, what the hell? You have to take care of yourself mentally phys and physically. Sure. You know, not just physically, mentally, too. People don't think like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't pay a enough attention to that part of themselves, I believe. Right. And the only one that can help you is yourself. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That, that's... I mean, it's up to you. What you do. Uh, that, that's kind of always the case, though, right? Right. Um, and I just wanted to pass this along since it's Christmas, and this will be kind of like, in a way, a gift. But I'm sure other people have talked about this. I'm sure Grammy Mary has talked about this. But anyway, um, I just noticed tonight after I took my shower today um, that my skin is really dry. Yeah. Okay. The, the skin on my back and everything, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I get itchy this time of year, and it's because as soon as it gets cold out, it gets dry out. Yes. And it just saps the moisture right out of your skin, right? Yeah. And so you really have to, when you live in a winter climate, you really have to combat this dry skin. I usually use like a loofah sponge Yeah. thing, but you can also make these homemade body rubs, body scrubs, mm -hmm. and you just use stuff that's in your kitchen. Okay. Most of them have sugar in them to give that, you know, um, sheen. No, like the the gritty part, like the. Oh, okay. Well, part, yeah, you know? right, right. An abrasive thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, there's just an article that I found just doing a quick search. Um, like there's the honey brown sugar scrub, the green tea body scrub, the ginger coconut oil body scrub, pumpkin spice scrub, honey blueberry face scrub. Yeah. Blueberry sugar body scrub. I mean, so it's all like natural. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like you don't have to spend a zillion dollars on over the counter overpriced crap at Walmart when you can just use the stuff that you have on hand at home. Sure. Here's one coffee and banana foot scrub. <laughs> okay. It says caffeine tones and banana smooths. Smooths. So naturally, the combination of the two creates an unparalleled foot scrub. Say hello to Stamble Ready Feet. There you Terrific. go. Terrific. Well, you know, another thing, too, in, in the winter, uh, mm -hmm. you're in your house, everything's closed up, you got your heater right. running. Yeah, uh, everything so, gets dried out. So it's good to have a, uh, a humidifier. Oh, I have a dehumidifier in my basement, though, but that's a whole different thing. That's you know? a whole different thing. That's the opposite. <laughs> but I don't, I, we used to have humidifiers when I was a kid, and man, you got to clean them things so, so good. Well, of, of course, but. Um, but you can, you can boil water on the stove, I mean. Yeah, yeah, whatever, anything to. to that jump, will add moisture to the air, right? Any, anything to jump your humidity up. Like right now. I'm looking at my uh, my desktop widget here for temperature, mm -hmm. and, yep. and it gives humidity. So outside, it's actually 47% humidity. But I have one right here in this room, and it says 10%. So um, <laughs> That's low. That's very low humidity. That's very, that's very low. Uh, but as I'm just saying that with, with the heater running and everything and everything closed up, it, yep. it's going to dry out in your exactly. house with, with the heater running. So, right. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I was just – 
I just thought about that today because I'm like, okay, that's something I can pass along because I'm going to try these because <laughs> yeah, I'm itchy. I don't like being itchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're funny, Frumpy. <laughs> <laughs> the it heat runs. of winter, yeah, it does. It dries you up. It, like the heat from your furnace, it's very drying. It, no, it's no, very I, drying. No, yeah, I, it, I, I meant his, his link there. It rubs the lotion on its skin. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Or I don't else, think you want to try that one. Or else it gets don't the try hell that one again. at home. <laughs> yeah, well, no. <laughs> don't try that one at home. <laughs> uh, great great part of that movie, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go back to some music here. It's Chris Bass. Right. Chris what? Bass. Chris Bass. Yay. All right. Woohoo. Big. Bad Voodoo Daddy. Merry Christmas, Raina. <laughs> Raina Dell said there, uh, doing rocking around uh, the Christmas tree. Uh, uh, Moose Girl. Oh, these are all, I think these were all Moose Girl requests. Chuck Berry, run, Rudolph, run. Uh, yeah, and we kicked it off with Big Bad Voodoo Daddy doing uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Now, I, I, I kind of wonder about Rudolph. Was he, like, drunk all the time or something? Where did he get that big red nose? <laughs> he was born that way, Grim. Okay. It's okay to be different. It is. It is. It, it is. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Him and, uh, the, 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 him and that little Hermy character were kind of creepy, you know. The dentist. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to be a dentist, Hermie. Yeah, he was a creepy little dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what time I, is it? I remember, I remember that show when I was a kid, boy. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. What time is it? It's ten oh nine. Okay. Or eleven oh nine. One article said five oh three, but now this one's saying nine forty five about the Great Wolf Lodge. Okay. Uh, that's just a. Oh, Rob, Rob said he worked. He he lived there for a short time. Oh, okay. In Grapevine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. I haven't checked Twitter here. Let's see if I'm finding anything on it. All right. Uh, I don't see anything. Okay. It's on Daily Mail, but it's not on Twitter. Okay. Weird, which is weird, but, you know, it's Christmas night. Oh, near DFW Airport, okay. Okay, so this is right. DFW area. Okay. Right. Oh, another Mama Little phone. Oh, where'd this one at? San Francisco. Gingerbread. <laughs> the home of the San Francisco treat. Gingerbread monolith, all right. Yep, the gingerbread monolith appeared today, apparently. Uh, uh, near San Francisco, or in San Francisco. Oh, I, apparently it's made out of gingerbread. I, does it say that? Oh, it looks like it is. <laughs> <laughs> it says metal, metal monolith. Yes. Metal, 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 metal. Metal monoliths became part of the 2020 mystery when one was discovered in Utah after being there for more than five years. Uh, but uh, San Francisco brought a... Oh, of course, one was found in Romania, one was in Albuquerque, one was... Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of monoliths right. popping up. San Francisco yeah. brought the monoliths uh, to the holidays when one was discovered erected made out of gingerbread at, sun okay. uh, at sunrise on Christmas morning. Uh, They're just trying to feed the animals or something, you know? I, I guess. Um, gingerbread. <laughs> so, so the videos of the gingerbread structure as it appeared in the crisp city air. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he said it smelled amazing. Um, <laughs> no one has claimed credit for the monolith. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't, are, would you? Uh, there, are no <laughs> there are no specifics on the height, uh, but Twitter already responded to Sharma with suggestions that it was aliens or Santa himself. It looks pretty tall. I don't know. Uh, it looks pretty tall. Yeah, yeah. Cool gingerbread bottleist. So get on All out, right. get on out there, and get yourself a slice <laughs> of the monolith. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, oh my god. Oh my Could god. this get any weirder? Uh, probably not. <laughs> well, I have some... I mean, I'll go ahead. No, go no, ahead. you go ahead. I was going to say, you know, the the bomb thing this morning... And all these active shooter things. It's like, Jesus Christ, there's only, what, how many days left of the year? Like, Seven. It, like, Seven. what else is going to fucking occur? Which, here? which like, by the way, let, let, let me let me remind everybody that yeah. we are next, next week's Freakers Ball will be Thursday night, New Year's Eve. Um, when we're doing it that way, because... On on uh, New Year's Eve is we're going to do our our prediction show. So if you have predictions for next year, what you think or believe or have foreseen, uh, somehow pre- you you can, can predict a thing for next year. Go ahead and get your predictions in. And to do that, all you got to do is put exclamation point predict space and then whatever you think is going to happen, whatever you truly believe will happen next year. Put your predictions in, and we'll we'll share them on the show here uh, next week, and we'll yeah. record them into our blog post that we've been doing for the last seven, eight years. How long have we been doing that? Um, we, we, we've got many prediction shows already uh, on the books and in the record, so you can we look, look yep. back and, and and see. And because I, I, you know, nobody predicted this pandemic nonsense, planned pandemic nonsense this year. But it has been predicted in previous years that there would be a pandemic, an outbreak of some unknown virus. Um, but right. not not it was it was not predicted for this year, but it has been predicted in previous years. So uh, you, you know you may want to go back and look through some of the old prediction shows and see. Oh well, he predicted it. he was just his timing was off. Um, who else? Great, you never yeah, know. Yeah. There's, a, so, there's some good ones in there. There are some really good ones in there. So go get your predictions in. We'll share them. We'll have a good time. Uh, so uh, on tomorrow or next Thursday night. And it will be actual New Year's Eve. No, it will be next yeah, Thursday yeah, yeah, night. It'll, it'll, New Year's yep. Eve, which is New Year's Eve. Right. Right, right. So, so, so we'll go through all of the predictions that were set for this year um, yep. and whether we, whether they were right or not, if we can even tell. Sometimes we can't tell. Sometimes the predictions are so... Uh, hard to say uh, Weird. whether or not they, whether <laughs> or or not they actually yeah. happen. And then we'll go through the predictions for this year, I mean for the 2021, and, right. and, and then those will all be recorded uh, in, 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 uh, in, the, in the post-show blog there. And those are, those are put in a special place on, on the RLM menu there. Um, so, uh, yeah, 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 that'll be cool. Uh, all right. <laughs> so get those predictions in, Benoit. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. And don't make them. Come goofy. on, man. And try to try not to make them goofy. Uh, Come on, man. Try, try and do real yeah, predictions. Don't make them goofy, guys. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, you know the thing. You know the thing. That's right. Why don't you shut up? Oh, <laughs> you, you, you dog-faced pony soldier. My pony soldier. <laughs> Okay. Oh boy, four years of Biden. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It'll never be four years of that guy, but you know. Oh no. No, no. He's okay. He's like not well. No. Serious predictions, real shit, stuff that you have been foreseen or dreamt or whatever. Or think that could happen. Be, it could be, be whatever be, you want. You know. Be, be, I mean, uh, what we try to do, like, don't do like nonsensical. Right, and don't and don't you be know, like don't be like nostril dumbass because that guy yeah. and the shit he predicted you never knew when it was supposed to happen you never knew what it really was people take all of his old quatrains and apply their own theories to stuff that's going on in the world now oh look he predicted this no he didn't what are you reading because <laughs> uh, he 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 was he was he was full of nonsense um, nostril dumbass is that what you call him <laughs> nostril dumbass. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. there you go. <laughs> he was he was a he was a hoaxer. That's what he was. Um, <laughs> he, yeah, he, pretty much. He was. He just made shit up, man, and, and, and he made it so like it could apply to anything, you know. So try try and be a little clearer than he be be more Edgar Casey like. Um, <laughs> 
Casey was yeah. far Casey was far far better than Master Dumbass ever was. Oh yeah, big time. Oh man, uh, so yeah, a- and Casey had other powers too, but uh, yeah. Yeah, he did. He, he did. He was could a heal. very interesting man. He he could heal. He could predict. He, he and it's uh it's a different spelling of his name. Who Casey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's E D G A R as yeah. your typical spelling. Casey is C A Y C E. Right. Yep, I've got it's books. Not typical. I've I've got books on on Casey and all his stuff and Nostradamus and all his stuff and. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and reading through, and you know, people trying to, oh, this, this, uh, you know, Hitler was this guy Hister, which is not that guy Hister. Hister didn't even mean a guy. I, I forget exactly <laughs> what it meant in the book, but who came yeah. up with that? Nostradamus? No, he Nostradamus didn't come up with that. Somebody oh. wanting to apply what he what he wrote to what was going on in the world at that time, or, oh, look, okay. or looking back at what had happened. And said, "Oh, look at this, and look at that. Uh, these these can fit together. Uh, no, no, they can't. <laughs> no, they can't. Oh God. Anyway, this this is uh, and we'll talk mm-hmm. more about this next week because you know that's yeah. gonna the wrap up of the year. But uh, this has been the year of the Corona nonsense, the Corona Bologna, the the fake pandemic." Um, and, and and everybody talking about all these 320,000 deaths in the United States from COVID. No, they're not from COVID. They're not at all. Uh, but even ignoring all that. A lot of that, them are not. Even ignoring all that. Even saying that yep. corona is real and the deaths are all absolutely definitely applied to, to corona. Um, that, that's, 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 it's in, so just saying all that was true. Uh, uh, ben, you got to put the, the, the title of the of the of the song in the request. Um, see what it says there. See what Barman's telling you. Anyway, um, <laughs> otherwise I just see a leak. I don't know what the fuck it is. Uh, yeah, thanks, Moose. Uh, anyway, so I came across this story a couple days ago. Uh, it was posted, uh, authored by Paul Joseph Watson on Summit News, posted on ZeroHedge.com, and this is a story. Even saying. All of those freaking deaths they say are corona are actually corona. Mm-hmm. In, San, in San Francisco, drug overdoses have four have killed four times more people than COVID. Four times. So official figures out of San Francisco show that drug overdoses have killed almost four times more people than COVID this year. And yet the government continues to hand out free needles to addicts. I don't really have a yep. problem. I, you know, I don't really have a problem with them handing out free needles. Um, uh, <laughs> there's so many problems that they can have from using used needles and shit. Uh, so I, I have no problem. Uh, these people, if they're going to use drugs anyway... Uh, and shoot up on the street, then if if you got the money to hand out free needles, then hand them out for the free needles. Uh, right. Uh, uh, but whatever. It's better than people using dirty needles. Whatever. Uh, a record yeah. 621 people died of drug overdoses in San Francisco this year. A God, staggering, dang. a staggering number. How many, Grim? 621. Of, of old overdoses in San Francisco in that in that Holy one city. Holy shit. This year. Uh, that number far outpaces the 173 deaths from corona the city has seen thus far. Uh, many people overdosed in low-income apartment buildings, slums, uh, yeah. and in city-funded hotel rooms. Cities funding hotel rooms? Uh, for the homeless. Others died on sidewalks and alleyways and parks and around the city. Despite the deaths, the government continues to hand out some 5.8 million free syringes a year to drug users. Now, Paul Joseph Watson, I, there's a lot of crap about him I don't like. And his opinion on on things such as these free needles, I don't like. Uh, there's there's a lot of stuff he says I, I really don't like. Um, he, he, he's kind of an arrogant little bastard. I don't know if you have yeah. Paul Joseph Watson you've seen. but uh, I don't. Yeah, I yeah, know who he is. He, I don't like yeah. him. Uh, he's, he's a British twerp. Anyway, um. It also appears as though lockdowns have exacerbated illegal drug use, imagine that, throughout California. Other areas of the state have seen a spike in drug use and overdoses amid lockdowns, including L.A. County. Uh, In 2013, the county fentanyl 
uh, in the county. Fentanyl accounted for three percent of drug-related deaths at the start. Oh, that's bad stuff. At the start of 2020, 42 percent of drug deaths were fentanyl-related in the area, and that number jumped to 51 percent when oh. lockdowns were enacted in March. Wow. Uh, the San Francisco's homeless drug user problem is so chronic that in 2019, residents began desperately install, installing boulders on the side of the streets to event, uh, in an effort to prevent camping. So uh, a knock-on effect, massive increase in the city's homeless population, of course, because everybody's out of, you know, there's no money. Nobody's got jobs. A lot of more people are, are homeless Right. Now, and a lot more are going to be homeless well, Very. in California, too, it's warm there, it, well, generally. It's not all that warm in San Francisco. Um, no, because it, you're in the water. It's, it's not freezing. It's not like, like here in the winter or your it's not place. not like here. Or your place in the winter. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so. Um, all major cities right now, though, and even Eau Claire, we have a problem with this homelessness shit. Right, right. It's, oh, shoot. So, anyway... Um... Well, it's not good. Grim, okay, so I, I watch this, listen to the scanner sometimes. Right. The Eau Claire. And I am on the Facebook page for the scanner group. But um, an old woman, or a woman, was sta called the cops, or called the, no or the number, you know, because she was standing outside for an hour and her feet were cold. Right. And that's a homeless person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and then if they don't have room, but to me, they should never run out of room at the homeless shelter. I mean, within reason, you know what I mean? Right, like, well, I mean, you know, with with a lot more people going homeless at this point in time, mm -hmm. they're out of money, they, they're they not getting yep. any help from anybody. Um, uh, there, there's no real charities out there anymore. Um, not they're, really. They're, 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 well, they're all, they're all regulated and... Crap! They're yeah, all, they're they're all, uh, you know, the freaking, uh, um, they're five hundred one c threes or whatever, and and yep. and if they're not, they can't stay in business, right? Uh, because uh, you know any any of the donations that come in, the government taxes mm -hmm. the fuck out of them. Uh, if if they're not, which is wrong when it's a homeless shelter, it, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, but unless they're a government regulated five hundred one c three or. Other, they have a few other designations. But the five hundred one c three isn't that major of a deal. Like we we did it a is. meeting. This it is though. You got to meet all these these stupid rules and regulations. But, in order no, to, to be a, they're talk is that the same as being a nonprofit, Grim? Yeah, it's a nonprofit. Okay, so like from my understanding though, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we had this Zoom meeting for our neighborhood group. Right. And the only reason I tuned in is because I got a flyer on my door. Right. But the lady was saying. You can do a 501c3, and it's not that hard, and it's just like a, a couple pieces of paper, you know. Uh, they well, made it seem like it wasn't that difficult to do it. Yeah, well, she's probably running one. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. But... I, 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 uh, I worked with uh, my sister and a friend of hers uh, for, I don't know, about a year, year and a half on uh, this one they were doing for, for animals, for cats and dogs. Yeah, um, and it was it was a cool idea, it was a cool concept. It was a good thing yep. to do, um, mm -hmm. but they had to follow all these freaking rules uh, that that were set out by the government in order to eat to have a charity at all. At all. And um, was that federal or state? It's federal. Okay. It's federal. And okay. That, you know, it, you well, have... from my understanding, though, the reason they want to do this is to quote unquote be legitimate and actually do fundraising. You have to do a 501 c 3 or you're right, exactly. violating some law or something. Exactly. That's the problem. You shouldn't have to. Right, exactly. To. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, you, should, you know, uh, prior to this crap coming out, back mm -hmm. in the 60s or early 70s and before mm -hmm. that, um, people people could set up a homeless shelter on their own. Uh, right. And, and run it with and and, yeah. and take take donations. Well, they the, did that in the depression. People did that in the depression. Yeah, yeah. And you could take they donations. They rented out rooms in their house. Cause, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and you could take donations from the community, and and it wasn't mm -hmm. uh, you weren't taxed on those donations. Um, it wasn't considered income at that point. Um, okay. Yeah, exactly. Rob works. Fucking greedy control yeah. freak motherfuckers need to mind their own fucking goddamn business. 
Right. I, I, I added it. I mean, it, they got the government's got to have their dirty hands and everything. Yes, they do. They and don't the, want the, you making any profit without them getting some from, profit too. Right, and there used to be community clinics people could go to for health care. Right, that, right. That were not all government freaking regulated. And, exactly. Uh, and and um, just just listen to some old Ron Paul stuff. He'll he'll tell you all about them, man. Um, that that until until the government decided they needed to get their dick into the, into the business, then uh, <laughs> uh, anyway anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, speaking 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 mm-hmm. of government getting mm-hmm. their dick in your business, <laughs> <laughs> this is not the United States government or your city or state government. This is a a global NGO. A, a non-governmental organization that's that's totally governmental organization. Oh, big time. The WHO has done what? Ick. What Del- have they done now? Deletes naturally acquired immunity from its website. You can no longer naturally what? naturally acquire immunity from a disease by getting the disease and having your body build, build up a, immunity to it. No, that no longer works. Okay. The, well, they've got, uh, the, the WHO, whatever people, the, 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 whatever. The WHO has deleted that ability, that capability of your body that's existed since man. Well, prior to man, the animals all have it too. That when, when you get a disease, your white blood cells go out there and they attack it and they remember exactly uh, what 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 came into your body before. In case it comes in again, it knows how to knock it down. So now. Too bad, so sad, the WHO says. Maybe you have some sense of something fishy going on. Same. If if it's not one thing, it's another. Corona Bologna lived on surfaces until it didn't. Masks didn't work until they did. Then they didn't. There's an ace. <laughs> There is an asymptomatic transmission. Oh my God! They, they're out of control. The, the, there is asymptomatic transmission, except there isn't. Lockdowns work to control the virus, except they don't. All these no, peop- they don't. They make it worse. <laughs> all these, ah! all these, all these people are sick without symptoms until whoops. PCR tests are wildly inaccurate because they Big were time. never, they were ah. never intended to be a diagnostic tool. Everyone is in danger of the virus, except they're not. It spreads in schools, except it doesn't. <laughs> every, 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 oh every, fucking God. Everything now is a contradiction of what it was before, and it may become what was now is going to be a contradiction tomorrow. On it goes, daily. It's no wonder that so many people have stopped believing anything that the public health authorities, quote, quote, uh, say. In combination with the governors and other autocrats doing their bidding, they set out to take away freedoms and human rights and expected us to thank them for saving our lives. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you, motherfuckers. Yep. At some, asses. At some point oh. this year, for me it was March 12th, life began feeling like a dystopian novel of your choice. Well, now I have another piece of evidence to add to the mile-high pile of fishy mess. The WHO, the World Health Organization, for reasons unknown, has suddenly changed its definition of a core concept of immunology. immunology. Herd immunity. Its uh, its discovery was one of the major achievements of the 20th century science, gradually emerging in the 1920s and then becoming ever more refined throughout the 20th century. Herd immunity is a fascinating observation that you can trace to biological reality or statistical probability theory, whichever you prefer. It is certainly not a strategy, so so ignore the media source that describes it that way. Herd immunity speaks directly to the explanatory power to the empirical observation that respiratory vis- viruses and either are either widespread and mostly mild common cold or severe and short-lived Ebola. Uh, why is this? The reason is that... Oh, what happened there? 
Uh, the reason that, that that when a virus kills its host, Ebola, that is, <laughs> well, that is, that's what Ebola does. It kills right. its host. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So it never becomes widespread. That is, when a virus overtaxes the body's ability to integrate it, the host dies and so does the virus. Uh, and it doesn't spread to others. The more this occurs, the less it spreads. If the virus doesn't kill its host, the cold, the flu, uh, it can hop to others through all the usual means. When you get a virus and fight it off, your immune system built into your body, born into your body, been there for multiple, multiple generations. Uh, your immune system encodes that information in, that, in a way that builds immunity to it. When it happens to enough people, and in each case is different, can't put a clear number on it, especially given so many cross immunities, the virus loses its pandemic quality and becomes, becomes endemic, which is to say predictable and manageable. Each, yes! new, each new generation incorporates that information through more exposure. And so when you were born, you get everything your parents had and what their parents before them. And that, right, da, 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 right, da. right. Uh, this is what one would call vir virology or immunology 101. Yes, hello. Yeah, the basics, the very basics. Uh, it's, it's what you read in every textbook. It's what you were taught in ninth grade. I was taught when I was a going to be a mom, or and I was reading about being a mom and was getting advice from all these people and doctors and everything. Yeah. You know, people were telling me it's good for you, your, your kids to get sick. Yes, it's good for them because to get it dirty. Because develops their immunity. Yep, it, it, it's good. It's yep. good for the kids to get dirty and. and I mean, you know. not totally, not cancer or something. Well, that's no, not, no, that's not the same thing. But, but, that's like terminal. That's like bad, bad. But, but know, can, okay. cancer is not contagious. Um, no, it is not. <laughs> What I'm saying, the contagious ones, the colds, the flus, the whatever. My kids had um, measles, mumps, chicken virus. Pox. Yeah, measles, mumps, chicken pox, all that stuff. Right. Yeah, my kids got rotavirus when they were because they had to go to the ER one time, and they while they were at the uh, ER, they picked up rotavirus. Yeah. Trust me, that's not fun. But no, it's not fun. Exactly, Rob. It wasn't Rob. life threatening. It was not life threatening. It would have been if I hadn't treated it. Obviously, you know, it could have been. Yep. But no, a virus can't be treated with antibiotics. We know that, right? Right. Because antibiotics only treat infection. Okay. So anyway, so, as, as Rob yep. points out, people get cancer from the freaking vaccines. They can, You could. And as I pointed out for many years on this program, is no way in fucking hell am I going to let them blast radiation into my freaking breast tissue. Okay? Or so your brain what? or where anywhere you know, else. What's breast cancer? Bing, bing, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, anyway, going on a little bit with this here. Uh, it's been taught in the ninth grade cell biology for probably 80 years that people have been taught about immunology, basic basic cell immunology, uh, that, that this is how this crap works. Observing the operations of this evolutionary phenomenon is pretty wonderful because it increases one's respect for the way in which the human biology has adapted to the presence of pathogens with, without absolutely freaking out. And the discovery of this dynamic in cell biology is a major reason why public health became so smart in the 20th century. We kept calm. We managed viruses with medical professionals, doctor-patient relationships. We avoided the medieval tendency to run around with our hair on fire, but rather use rationality and intelligence. Even the freaking nasty-ass New York Times recognizes that natural immunity is powerful with corona, which is not in the least a bit surprising. Until one day... Right. Until one day... This strange institution called the World Health Organization, once glorious because it was mainly responsible for the eradication of smallpox, has suddenly decided to delete everything I just wrote from Cell Biology Basics. It has literally changed the science in a Soviet-like way, or a 1984 way, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, it has removed with the delete key, any mention of natural immunities from its website. It has taken the additional step of actually mischaracterizing the structure and functioning of vaccines. 
so that you will believe me, I will try to be as precise as possible. Here is the website for, from June 9, 2020. Uh, you can see it here on archive.org. You have to move down the page and click on the question about herd immunity. You see the following. Anyway, you'll have to look at this because it's uh, some embedded stuff here. Um, anyway, th that's that's what they've done. Uh, they 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 single-handedly, single bodily, I guess I don't know how you want to look at the WHO. Who who? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Won't I don't think that's. Wait, I wait, think wait. they call it them. They call themselves who? For a reason, because you don't know who the fuck they are. Won't get fooled again. Yeah, no. You don't know um, who they are. Right. Who so, are you? Who the fuck are you? Anyway, there's the article. The, the link will be in the post-show blog, of course. Um, uh, but uh, there you go. Jeffrey Tucker uh, posted on AIER, the American Institute for Economic Research. Uh, so, <laughs> so there you go. No longer will you ever have natural immunity, natural built-up immunity to any disease that doesn't exist. Just ask the global experts, the global authority, the W freaking H freaking O. And they don't care about you. <laughs> they don't, of course way. not, because they want you to take the poison. They don't want you to be able to heal nope. yourself in any manner. No, they don't. They, that, and they don't even want you to think you can now. No, no. So they, they, forget about your immune system. Just forget it even exists. And, you and, know what, buddy? No, I'm not going to do that. And every every single one of you out there now has asymptomatic vi diseases, which means... That's bullshit. They tried to tell that from the beginning. Oh, you could have it and not have symptoms. Which, which, um, means, which means you don't have it. If you're if you're sick without any symptoms, that means you're not sick. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, we're going back to the music. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no yeah. pun intended by saying that. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, people, enjoy. Oh, oh man, things God. getting fucked up, man. I, I'm sorry. I know it's Christmas. Yeah. But. If this think about this year, and you know, shit's really fucked up, dude. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Merry fucking Christmas, everybody. And sing Merry along. Merry freaky, freaky motherfucking Christmas. There you go. Everybody sing along. Y'all know the words. All right then, enjoy. Melakalikilaka. <laughs> Ha, they fooled me. Thought they were done. Whatever. Hang on. Uh, to to y'all. <laughs> From Hawaii. Um Melikaliki <laughs> Maka. Uh, yeah, all that. <laughs> what? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Did I lose you? Apparently. I'm still here. As far as I know. Anyway, that was uh, the Petersons with Mela Kaliki Maka Kalakalaka Maka. Uh, before that, Elvis Presley doing Blue Christmas, and we kicked it off with um, I, you know, I don't even know who does that song. Uh, I can't ho, hear you. Ho ho, fucking ho! Uh, that was actually a, a rare Grams request. Oh, it's Kevin Bloody Wilson. That's who does that. Uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> rare Grams request. And, and I know she's just playing around. She 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 loves Christmas. I know she does. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Moose, uh, how you lost me, but I'm still here. I'm still here. Maybe what, you got to reconnect, call back, or whatever. Maybe what I, happened? I, I I don't know, Moose girl. I'm still here. I'm still talking to you. Um. So, if anybody out there can hear me, tell Moose. That yes, I'm still here. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, and I hear her. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just type in here. <laughs> oh, it happens. It happens sometimes. We get these little technical glitches from time to time. Yeah, I hear Moose and I hear me. Well, I hear, you hear me. me now. I I always did hear you. 
Oh, I gotta call you back. I gotta hang up. I don't uh, know what's going on. All right, hang up and call back. That'll work. Um, <laughs> hopefully that'll work. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These things happen sometimes on on live radio. You know, you got technical glitches where we're dealing with you know low budget equipment and all that stuff, and and sometimes we we uh, lose connection between each other even though everything's everybody's still here. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess he's gonna call back. So um, that, that's cool. <laughs> oh, I don't really have any Christmas stories here to share with people. You know. Um, well, maybe this is, could be a Christmas story. I don't know. Uh, maybe, yeah, no, this is a Christmas story. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, these are both Christmas stories. Well, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, try and call back. Did you call back? You're not going to call back? What's going on here? Where are you at? Moose girl. Okay, there she is. Let me call, I'll call her. Because she's not calling, so let me call her. Ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a ling, ding a ling ding a ling. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. I, whatever. Okay. I don't know. I don't know either, but it happens. Yep. Yep. And it does. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh. man. Okay. Okay. This next one's a Christmas story of sorts. Okay. Um, of sorts. <laughs> And it's a follow-up. It's also a follow-up story. Because we talked about this story uh, when, it, when it first came out. Um, but but, but now, uh, now there's another story about it. Because poor guy, his, his wife broke his wife. Do you know whose wife it was? Most? No, I don't. Uh, it was that, that bodybuilder that married the sex doll. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So, bodybuilder may spend holidays alone after <laughs> after sex doll wife is broken. Yes, he'll oh, have no. a he'll have a blue blue Christmas without her. Um, uh, so with the with the sound of wedding bells still fresh in his mind, all Yuri Talachko wanted for Christmas was some romance amid jingle bells <laughs> with his sex doll bride. But alas. <laughs> Dear Margot has apparently broken down, possibly, oh, no. which I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't even really want to know what that means, but <laughs> she, she, possibly spoiling the couple's yulti, yuletide plans. The kooky bodybuilder from Kazakhstan, who tied the knot with the rubber doll after an eight-month courtship, which is bizarre enough, uh, now has to wait and see if her broken bits can be fixed on time. She is broken. Now she is being repaired. She's in another city, he said. When she recovers, it will be a gift for both of us, at least for you, buddy. Um, I don't know so much for her. She's a rubber doll. Anyway, Talachko is holding out hope that she can be returned by Christmas Day, which is January January 7th in his country. So Christmas is not December 25th okay. the, the worldwide, at least. Uh, not in Kazakhstan. It's it's January seventh okay. there. The enamored muscle man. Oh, quit moving around on me here. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the enamored muscle man was recently seen on Instagram planting a gentle kiss on Margot, who appeared to a bit stiff in her revealing white gown as she clutched a bouquet of flowers and stared into the distance at their wedding. Uh, the unconventional. <laughs> The unconventional couple got engaged in, in December 2019 when the bald, blue-eyed hunk, who describes himself as a sexy maniac, popped the question. And apparently somehow she said yes. I, I, I don't know. If if you want to be my wife, don't say anything. Perfect. All right. Um, <laughs> Delachko, <laughs> Delachko said he met Margot at a nightclub, which is weird as well. What do they got sex dolls at nightclubs for? But whatever. Where he rescued her from some unwanted attention. Adding that they had planned... Okay! All right, now! Adding that they had planned to take the plunge in March okay. be before... Right. They planned it together! They, they planned before Corona hit. They discussed it! <laughs> he, he told... <laughs> he, he, he told the Daily Star that the wedding was delayed. 
again after he was he was a he was attacked during a transgender rally in Kazaka City of Almaty on October 31st when he suffered a, when he suffered a concussion and a broken oh, no. a broken nose after dressing oh, after dressing as a woman for the event. So some some peop, some guys beat him up. After he dressed as a woman on Halloween, I don't know, maybe it's not Halloween over there, I, I don't know, it's October 31st, but if Christmas is not Christmas, then maybe Halloween's not Halloween, I don't know. Describing their relationship, I don't know. Describing their relationship, the Lachko told the Daily Star, in general, I began to get jealous of Margot. He got jealous. Uh, this guy's a whack job. No, no doubt about it. Many men would like to... I mean, to come on now. <laughs> Is this the Onion or Babylon Bee? No, 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 no. It's New York Post. Um, uh, many I mean, ma- come on now. Many men would like to imagine the same. After the wedding, I decided to show her to less people. I for- All right, this guy wait, is wait, a wait, nuts wait. case. I forbade her from Instagram. Oh, she's not going on Instagram herself. He is <laughs> for her. All right, Graham, we got to move on. We, I, I can't take this whack job anymore. I don't want to give him any more fucking attention. He doesn't deserve it. He's complete, unless it's a satire. Well, uh, unless it's satire, maybe he he is a satire. I I don't know. Um, I I'm this is not real. Dude. That's, no, no. No, I, I think it is. Flat. I think I think it's absolutely real. There's some wacky. I mean, ass- it could be. There are wax jobs out there. I am not disputing that. No. Now, didn't some woman marry a plant or something like that a few years ago? Maybe that was, I think that was, yeah, fairly recent. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. So people are people are nuts. Um, they are. And and he is one of those people. Yes. That, that is nuts. Now, this guy, I don't know if he's nuts mm-hmm. or not. I I, I, uh, I, I I messaged over on realliberty.org to Mental Pancakes this story, but uh, maybe he hasn't been over there since then. Um, I, I, I guess he, he loves his sex doll. He's in love with his sex doll. Anyway, so this guy from Florida, (laughs) Florida man, charged for eating pancakes in the middle of the road. (laughs) So a man's desire to eat pancakes in the middle of the road got him in trouble with police. (laughs) That had to have been him. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know. Like that. No, it, no, I'm kidding. Just the, the pancake aspect, though, and the is part, suspect. Right? It is suspect. On Monday, Lakeland Police Department received a call that a man was sitting in the middle of a crosswalk eating pancakes on a small TV table. And he was disrupting the flow of traffic by causing an obstruction. Police came to the area, uh, yet the man had left prior to their arrival. A video of the incident was posted on Facebook, and the police were able to track down 21-year-old Kieran Thomas, who, as the flapjack-eating man, Thomas admitted he ate the pancakes in the middle of the road as a prank. Uh, Thomas was charged with obstruction in the roadway and disrupting, disrupting the free flow of traffic. He will appear in court in April for his prank. <laughs> anyway, they got pictures and a video here uh, if you're interested in watching uh, pancake eating man in the middle of the freaking road. <laughs> That's on local10.com. So there you go. Eat your, well, you know, you're hungry. You got to eat your pancakes somewhere. He's got his bottle of syrup there, his little TV tray. He's not using his fork. He's just picking up the pancakes and eating them. <laughs> I mean, the middle of the road, that's really dumb, dude. I, I, I'm not sure what the prank was supposed to... to I, it was well, probably a prank. It, well, yeah. he said it was a prank, and and yeah. it, it, uh, I, 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 you know, I don't know. The International Road of Pancakes instead of House, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's more now. More what? The active shooter thing. They've, oh, okay. Like, changed the headline. All right. They've like up the fucking sen- sensationalism. Uh huh. You know, like they like to do. Yes, and it just says breaking news at active shooter. Their cops swarm the building, and guests are told to lock themselves in their rooms. 
I don't think they said swarm the building before, did they? I don't recall the word swarm. I right. So that I, I still I still got a I I still got an hour here, Rob. And and Cowboy Tech has two. <laughs> yeah, it's over for me. It just ended just now. Yeah, yeah, it's eleven o'clock and forty seconds. Yep. Um so uh, uh it seems like that might be the case. Uh, Rob's asking if uh someone just activated all the Manchurian candidates at once. That yeah. could be Rob. I mean, and to me, I was going to say, okay, Christmas morning, the Nashville thing, no one's around, okay? There were three people injured, No, except for they think they found human remains. They don't know if it is or not. Yeah. Christmas morning. Now it's Christmas night. Well, Christmas is over in Florida. It's not over. It just got done in Texas. So why all this crap on Christmas now? Uh, people, are, people are going nuts. Maybe over the. We did uh, say that at the beginning, but oh, it just seems weird. The, the Miami and now Texas active shooter things. I don't know. It just seems the timing. I don't know. Maybe. Well, you know what? It's gonna be. It's gonna be nuts for a while. It's gonna be nuts. Uh, at least until um, uh, January sixth, when the uh, Trump right. pulls out pulls out the the the, the final thing. You know. Uh, try try to which get, ain't gonna work. Which ain't gonna work, but but that, that's the last uh -huh. thing, the final thing that he's got right. to try. Nothing else has worked, and so all he right. can do and is they're hope. not gonna. It's it, it's it's done deal. Okay. Exactly. So anyway, but it's gonna be nuts up until yeah. then, at least up until then, and then after then, uh, you know, maybe like the uh, Proud Boys will all go crazy, or, or I whatever. I don't see that happening. I uh, I, I just. Yeah, I don't know either. I know, then, but, uh, but uh, it's just it's, it's a crazy. I'm not in that group. How would I know? I have no idea. You, you could know? be you could be a proud girl. I don't want to be. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I could never get over the name Proud Boys. It's like yeah, what, what, what I don't you, like that name. What, what, the, that hell name that? Kind of like what the hell is that? What the hell? What the hell? Is, is that, right. I is, don't like it. I don't like the name. Uh, I, I it's like whatever, guys. You know. Yeah, yeah it's it's, it's stupid. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, it's it's trying to be a bunch of nut, nutty stuff going on. Um, right, Rose. We did say that that Grim said that they're saying that it was maybe, or he even theorized that that was the if, if it was human remains, it's the person sitting in the RV. Right, he's a driver. It's a suicide mission, basically. Then, you know. Yeah, yeah, suicide mission because uh, do you want do you really want to live through bombing in a, an area like that? I don't think so. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. No, not if, I mean. I'm surprised. Well, but why do the recording? Don't you think it all could have been done remotely, though? Don't they say? Oh, sure, do that absolutely. Remotely? Like, why would the guy, unless it, he wanted to do it and wanted to die remotely you know? or by timer or whatever? I mean, there's a lot of ways. Right. You could so, do what, it. so I'm not. I don't know if I'm buying that about that. But but maybe he was just he was just distraught and wanted to kill himself. I don't know. Um, it's it's hard to say. And he was pissed off at AT and T apparently. Or or whatever or whatever. <laughs> uh, well, we, we don't know. I mean, I am pissed off at AT and T. Okay, and I will tell you why. Because they send me mailings twice a month soliciting for me to sign up with them. It's like, dude, I gave you guys up to over ten years ago. Why, yeah. why are you still sending me this crap? Exactly. You know, and they waste so much paper, dude. And they're not the only ones. Direct TV does it because I had their service at one point. My car had Sirius. No, they haven't. I don't know, Rob. They haven't said that yet. My car. Yeah, we don't know who owned the RV. Used to have Sirius, right? Well, they can probably look up that license plate, though. Yeah. If they can, there's no license plate in the front of it. Right. But I get mail from Sirius, even though. I bought the car three years ago, and I declined the service. Yeah. You know, they they never stop inundating you with junk. I can't believe how much junk mail I recycle every week. Like, it's crazy, dude. Yeah. I mean, the amount of junk mail that I get here, it's, it's out of control. Well, let, let me tell you why I hate AT&T. Okay. And this goes way back to, like, 96, 95, somewhere in there. Uh, it might have been 97. Anyway, we're right, right in that range. Uh, so we're talking a long time ago. Um, and the, the uh, before before Cox Cable was providing uh, broadband internet, 
and I was still on dial-up, AT&T came out with their DSL system. Uh, okay? So I signed right, up. Right, right, right. I yeah, remember that. Right. Yep. So I signed up with the DSL. And at the, at the first, at the beginning, it worked great. It was awesome um, compared to my, to my dial-up. Uh, you know, it was, it was, you know, five, ten times faster than the dial-up. Anyway, right, right. after a couple of months, um, mm-hmm. the, the modem broke. It broke. Yeah. And, and it was their modem. They were charging me for it every month. Right, it right. Was their right. freaking modem. And um, so I called them up and I said, hey, your modem broke. You guys need to send me a new one. Oh, yeah, that's, sure. That's fine. Well, it'll be $175. I said, what the hell are you talking about? Oh my God! 170. Yeah, this is this is your equipment. You guys have to have to. You know, I'm 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 purchasing your service to use right. with, with this thing. And they said, well, that's that's what we charge. And I said, fine, I'll just cancel my service. Well, that's fine too. But you're on a two year contract, and so so you have to pay out the balance of your contract in order oh to cancel it. Oh my this. God! And I went around and around with various people at AT and T over that, and they would never relent on that. So I, I finally said, fuck it, and I paid them off to, just to get rid of them. And uh, shortly after that, Cox Cable came through, and, and they were they were great um, for broadband. And they were tons better than the DSL anyway. But, yeah. Uh, but since that time, since, since they just, just totally just bent me over and screwed me hard, I, yeah. was like, I was like, fuck you guys. They did I, the same I, thing to me, dude. And I, I was like, I am done with you. I, yep. will, I will never use... Use AT and T anything again, and I and I have not in these last twenty odd years uh, since that. Right, happened. I know, but Rome's mine had Sirius at one time, and so since it did, they think that that's something I want too, and they got my information because I bought the car from the. It was a lease car at one point, and I bought it, and I get mailings. I don't get anything in the car. Yeah. You know, and if I hit serious on the car, it says, call this number to subscribe. Like, but I don't want it, but they still send me mailings. Yeah. It's like, stop already. I don't want it. You well, know, if I try. do, I'll, I'll ask you. You know what I mean? That's what I don't like about this push mailings and stuff. Right. And these credit card uh, offers and shit. Yeah. It's like, if I want something, I will seek it out. You don't have to, you know, pressure me to buy, you know. I took a fucking stupid loan out from one of those places, you know? Yeah. Where you pay more, and, and it's just bullshit. But that was like five years ago, right? Yeah. They still call me. <laughs> well, you can get the money from us if you... I'm like, fuck you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, stop calling me. If I want to do that again, I will let you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'll walk um, into your your office and I'll say, hey, you know. I, I used to have XM. I had it for a long time. And I, I really liked it. I, I, bought, I went to the store and bought the little radio that, uh, yeah. that, that, that you know, transmits through your, your car, FM radio. Yeah. Um, and I know it was great, especially like driving, uh, driving you know, long distances, cross country. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that. XM was freaking great. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and then and then they got you know combined with Sirius and I no longer wanted them. Um, right. Uh, well, actually, as as soon as they uh, they uh, hooked up with uh, who's that dickhead on the radio um, that that asshole out of New York? You remember what was his name? John. No, 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 no. And then the other guy, that, Howard Stern. Oh, Howard Stern, that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Like, I, I don't want any... kids in New York on the radio. Okay, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's only something. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so he, I mean, he had a big deal with Sirius XM, and uh, right, he and did. I, yeah, and I said, go to hell. But I had, I, I had like a boombox, a portable boombox, I could plug my Sirius radio into. It was, it was terrific. Um, and, right. and and uh, yeah, and I could use it throughout my house. Um, I yeah, no, but it was great. I I enjoyed it. I, I, I you had your blues channels, you had your rock channels, yeah, you, you had you know classic rock or whatever. All kinds right, of things. I love it's it, it's cool, yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, but but uh, and it was cheap. But now enough. everyone has like Spotify and Peach and all that crap. Yeah, but I, I don't. It's serious and that it's kind of fucking obsolete almost, really. Yeah, but it was great back then. Um, right, right. Yeah, I think it was like two thousand. When it first came out or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was no serious at that point. It was only. It wasn't. XM. No. Yeah. No. And, uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, so I, I loved it. It was, it was cool, but um, they never yeah. they never really bothered me after I canceled my XM. So that's good. See, serious. Like I never even told them that I want. Like, how did you get my information? Well, I'm sure the car dealership gives them that information. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, well when you, you sign know. up. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all in there. Right. Yeah. It's like fuck you guys for passing along my information. Now I'm getting this junk <laughs> mail that I don't want, and you know, it's like yeah, fuck yeah. you. I mean. I don't know how it all works, but... I don't know um, Anyway, I was watching some pro, something a couple of weeks ago, and it's mainstream media, but CBS um, Sunday morning sometimes has some good stuff, okay? And I had not heard about this story before. Yeah. But anyway, um, there's a cancer cluster... In Franklin, Indiana, in this Johnson County, Indiana. Okay. And they have a problem. <laughs> they Which have is? a big problem here. What, what's the problem? And Aaron Brockovich is even on it now. And the one mom broke my heart because her daughter died of geloma blastoma, which is like the worst kind of brain cancer you can have. Right. And. That's what my friend Heidi died of. But anyway, these people are being poisoned, and they, they didn't tell them. Okay. And they have, and what it is, Grim, it's not in the water, it's in the soil. Okay. And it, 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 it seeps up out of the soil. All right. So to mitigate the problem, it almost is impossible, right? Right. I mean, I think there's ways to do it, but... I think they're still in the, the early stages of this. Mm -hmm. But what they are, they tested 30 homes, and it's, it, it, um, the chemicals that are in question are TCE and PCE. And there used to be a Bendix plant there. Okay. And let me see, where did it say that? Oh, um, the Cambridge mean... Bendix Corp. Amphenol Corp. Franklin Power Products site. Okay. Anyway, all these kids have been dying of cancer, and two moms got together and started this task force, you know. Right. And uh, now Aaron Brockovich is involved, involved, and this story broke my heart. How can they – it's just an example of they keep everything hush-hush, it's like kids are getting cancer and dying here, you know, and right. you're not going to tell us what's fucking going on. Right. You know, and they don't hold these companies' feet to the fire. And the, the, the plant hasn't been there for a long time, but the effects are still there. Okay. And they didn't tell these people, like, you know, they use the example of, you know, when you, when you go to buy a house? Mm-hmm. The person you're buying that house from is supposed to let you know about all the issues that are going on, right? Right. Well, this this county and this, this government in this county, they should have told these people about this problem before they allowed them to purchase homes. So they kept it from them. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, these parents are appalled, dude. I would imagine so. Your kids start to get like, cancer. We... Right? Go ahead. You see your kids starting to get cancer. Yeah, I'd imagine they are appalled. Yeah. And it's like, so you know, it's called a non-disclosure agreement or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. When you And so people moved to this town specifically because they did, like, it was a subject of a 1950s um, home slice of America, like in the 1950s, right? Mm -hmm. They used Franklin, Indiana as, like, the typical... Main Street in the 1950s. They had the soda fountain, and it was a small town. You know what I mean? Right. And it was great. It was ultra America, ultra awesome. And then this Bendix plant goes in, and then they they end up shutting down. But they didn't clean up their mess good enough, and now these people, are, you know, however many years later, their kids are dying of cancer. Yeah, well, after, and they, after... they've kept it under wraps. Trust me. They're going to win this case, okay? They uh, are going to win it. They're looking to the EPA for, for rescue. I, that's 
That's that's right. Well, no fighting the EPA. Well, they're, well right. I I hear what you're saying, but that's why they got Aaron Brockovich Grimm. Not not because, fight, they're not fighting the EPA. They're they're fighting, fighting for, for them to take action. Yeah. Right, but they want them to say, hey, you got to clean this up better. Right. You got to mitigate this problem. You know. Yeah. yeah. But if I was, I swear to God, if I saw this story, I still lived there. I would be moving. I would not wait for the government to fix this problem. Yeah. I would not keep living there. I would fucking leave. Sure. Uh, so wouldn't you? Absolutely. Leave? I'd be gone, yeah. Yeah, I, I would get the hell out of there, and and, and then hope, hopefully my kid wasn't sick. So. Right. Um, I mean, and some of the kids have recovered. but so, it, And it's weird because it's all types of cancer. Yeah. It's not just brain cancer. It's leukemia. It's brain cancer. It's Bone, all these different types. Yeah. And it's in the soil they found out. But anyway, sure. I, I I know it was Christmas, but um, I guess the message from this is count your blessings. But another message from this is the EPA really aren't – they don't care about you. They let these of companies slide. And I'm sorry. You tell your that parent that lost their child, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's just not good enough. Right. That's just – People need to go to prison over this, all right? Yeah, well, if you Someone needs to be held accountable. And this is not the only the first case, either. No, of course not. There's been many, many cases like this. And you guys, it, it, I don't know how anybody can trust government. I really, really don't know how anybody can believe a fucking thing they fucking say. No. I, I, I don't know. I, that still boggles my mind today. 20 years later or whatever, you right, know? Right, right, right. Like, wh how can you guys trust these people? <sighs> and and the other part is, and part of it is cognitive dissonance, okay? Sure. The other part is ignorance is bliss. Yeah. The other part is they believe that the government cares about them. <laughs> and, or the other part is, well... <laughs> I know they've lied to me about some things, but they aren't lying to me about this thing. They wouldn't lie about this. No, never. It's like, what makes you think they don't lie about everything? Because exactly. once a liar, you're a liar. If you're, a, you know someone to be a liar, that is what they are. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, if if you want to uh, take and a the look, the government at... is not a person. Sorry, Grim. No, no. If you want to take a look at uh, what the EPA. What kind of things they do? All you got to do is look back a few years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we talked about it here on the show. Uh, yep. there, there was this mining operation going on in Colorado, uh, yep. right right along this river, and um, yep. uh, they 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 decided to go in there and clean it up. It, yep. was, it was a shutdown right. mine, mining operation, and when they did, they blew the fucking thing up, and yep. and, and, and all this crap, all, all all these poisons. Flooded, yeah. it, flooded into the river, and, the, yeah. and that, that river and it turned it like yellow, this yeah, puke yeah. yellow color, like yeah, yeah, gross, yeah. like yeah. like bile. It looked like bile. It, it did. Yeah. And, and anyway, so that that went down the river for hundreds and hundreds of miles, right. and 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 the EPA, APA said, "Well, that happens." Uh, yep, that happens sometimes. These, oh these, well, all these people tried to sue them, and not a guy, nothing, nothing worked. No, nope. uh, no, nobody can sue them because they're the freaking EPA. Right. And, um, right, they're the EPA, and they, and they, and they have uh, ultimate power, and good luck going against them. I mean, and, you know, Hal knows all about it. He he's I don't think he's fighting the EPA. I think it's a different uh, the, agency. Yeah, the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. Yeah, the Bureau of Land Management, but it's the same fucking deal. No, and you I, can't I, get very far. They won't let you. Like, you have to be like Hal is talking about. You have to know what you're talking about. Absolutely. You have to be ready for whatever they're going to throw at you, and most people just don't have that knowledge. They don't have it. Exactly. And they don't have the means to right. learn it, and they don't. They have to work. They have to support their family. They don't have time to do all this research when all these corporations have these high-powered attorneys, and they don't have just one attorney. They have ten attorneys right. against you and your attorney. Yeah, you got a whole team. Or you yourself being your own attorney. You're not going to win. You no. have to have as much money as they do. And that's why I am against that way of going about things. Okay? Sure, sure. Because, you, especially if you're going against these high-powered corporations, 
unless you bring in people like you know what's the thing I love about Erin Brockovich? She's not a fucking lawyer. No. She is not. She's just an actor. They have a lawyer that she knows that she's hired. Right, right. Right. But she started out being a whistleblower for what I can't don't know the name of it, but if you don't know her story, look it up. Or watch but the movie. That's how she got involved in all this crap. Yeah. yeah. What was it, Grim? Was it Pennsylvania? I, I don't, I don't recall. It. Just, I can't remember. I saw I saw the movie, but it's been a long time. She's been doing it for like over thirty years, at least forty mm. years, probably. Sure, sure. It's probably that long ago, but um, yeah. I mean, we have to, and for me, and and this is true. Um, if you like have like I live in Eau Claire, right, and we have fluoride on our water. Okay. Right. If I decide that I want to start getting that floor, and other towns have done this, okay? Mm -hmm. You can make stuff happen. You just have to be willing to do the work. And it's, yeah. You know, and it's not easy work. No, it is not. And you have to be able to recruit people to help you for your cause, because you cannot do it on, you could do it on your own, but... You're better off having a lot of community support behind you. Yeah. To get something done. Right. You know, and you have to be armed with all the knowledge of why is fluoride bad. Because we, all the people have been brainwashed by the dentist and by the government is for the health of your teeth, which we all know is bullshit, right? Absolutely. And so you have to, that's the first hurdle that you have to overcome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. educating people on the dangers of fluoride. Sure. And getting them willing to listen. You know, I mean, like, if I wanted to, it's still a free country, and I don't think this is illegal. I could print up a flyer, but this is probably illegal, since Patriot Act. Just put up a flyer and go throughout my neighborhood and say, do you, do you know we have fluoride in our water? Would you prefer not to be there? And just put it on everybody's door, not in their mailbox. See, that's how I got that flyer for that neighborhood meeting. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in my mailbox. It was on my door. Yeah. And so, if because you could get in trouble if you use the mail and you're not really mailing it. Oh, yeah, it's a federal offense. Right. So you have to be creative on how you get the information out there to the public in your community. Right. You know, and and I've heard Hal say this a lot. Pick a cause that it matters to you and that you're passionate about and start running. Sure. And that's, it, it takes boots on the ground. And that's what they mean when they say boots on the ground. Yeah. You know, they mean start a grassroots movement. Right. You know, people do it all the time. People started... Mothers against drunk drive. A mother started mothers against drunk driving because she lost her kid to a drunk driver. Great. Okay, yeah. One person yep. started that organization. Sure. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And that's how we, how you, we get out of this fucking control. Right. That they have over that the government has over us. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I want my property tax lower, cunts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why is it so high here in Eau Claire County as opposed to Chippewa County? You know, that could be another cause I could take up. You know what I'm sure, saying? Sure, sure, that's a good one. I mean, you have right. You have to be willing to tr- to make a difference. Yeah. In whichever way is works for you. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I, I don't know, Grim. I, I don't either. It's all fucked up, and it's all fucked happen. up. The problem is, change is so short. It's so they're so slow to change stuff. You know? Yeah. Like they, they could work a lot faster, but they purposely drag their feet on all this stuff. Oh, they get big money on this. And get side. it wrapped up in the court system, and you know, because they don't want you to succeed. They don't. They want the fluoride in the water, dude. Sure, they do. They want that in the water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's hear some more music okay. here. Okay, yep. Okay. We're ready for, for some more here. And and uh, I think you all know this song. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. If you've been around here for Christmases, then you've heard it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Caio Paz. Marachioli, <laughs> covering I Saw Mommy, kissing Santa Claus. Before that, we had Mariah Manson. <laughs> it's a mashup. Uh, uh, Marilyn Manson and Mariah Carey doing all I want for Christmas is the beautiful people. That's Bill McClintock. If you like mashups, uh, go check him out over there on the YouTubes. Uh, Bill McClintock. And we kicked it off with the Yopers. Doing Rusty Chevrolet. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Oh, I like all of those, actually. Yes. Yeah, all of those are good. Pretty, pretty good stuff, too. Was that Leo on sax or someone else? I, I don't know who's playing the sax for him there. It's maybe another one of the frog leapers. I'm just wondering if he plays it or not. I, yeah, I, I don't know. He's, he's multi-talented. He plays a lot of instruments. Yeah, he does. That's plays, what I was wondering. plays drums, keyboards, guitar, bass. Right. He, Most he, musicians, can, if they can read music, they can pretty much figure out any instrument. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously. It, you know, if you can read music, that's the key. <laughs> right. You know, yep. So, I, I yeah. mean, anyone can write lyrics, but putting it to music is a whole different thing. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, um, that's why I'm looking forward to the Grammys this year, even though I'm not really for award shows and all that, but I believe that some people have been nominated that deserve the recognition that have not got it for a while. Mm -hmm. And, um, Billy Strings totally deserves Bluegrass album of the year for home, uh, for 2020. Yeah. Uh, just an amazing album. The lyrics are amazing. Just yeah. total musicianship. Um, Sturgill Simpson's up for best rock album against Grace Potter and others. Uh, I I I'm torn on that one, Grim. I can't I can't pick Sturgill or Grace on that one. I mean, I I would probably have to go with Grace just because I'm more of a fan of her probably. Right. But I really like Sturgill Simpson a lot too, and he did do a masterpiece. I mean, so and I I've heard his and I haven't heard Grace's new one yet, but um I sh I, I will order that soon. Um, I'm sure it's all, but, or probably on some site, I can probably listen to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, today? I'm not sure. What day is it? Saturday? Oh, yeah, there's like two games maybe today. I don't know. It don't matter, dude. I don't know. But it gives me something to do. This sure. This has been the weirdest freaking Christmas, the weirdest year, like, that I can remember for a while, dude. Yeah. Personally, and just weird, like, globally, I guess. You know? How about you, Grim? How's this year been for you? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Not really too much different, actually, but... Right, but you got that Nazi Fuhrer, da Fuhrer governor. Yeah, yeah. There. well, but... She's but, bad news, dude. you got to get rid of her. You, but, I mean, but, New but, Mexico needs to say, see you later, alligator. Well, you would hope, but... You know, it's a but blue it's a state, socialist state. Yeah. Why? Why? I don't know I why. Would think it wouldn't be. I mean, they're all into aliens and crap. Or maybe they are. are. You guys really not into aliens? You know, like I, I, it's Santa Fe. When I went there, I saw aliens everywhere. Like alien blow up inflatables and alien designs and you know, aliens was a big thing in Santa Fe when I was there. Yeah. So do you yeah. guys like? Are you guys like all into aliens and everything, or is that just like? Well, it's a big thing. Rock? It's a it's a big thing for the state, you know. It's because uh, of Roswell, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's a good, it's a good uh, tourist thing or whatever, but right. Uh, I, I don't know how many people here are actually uh, into the whole thing, but uh, I like them. <laughs> I do. I like aliens. I, I want to meet one. I, I mean, I seriously would not be fearful. Well, it depends on the on the alien, you know. <laughs> right. Totally. And there's many different aliens out there. I, I there's mean, there's many it, different species. Oh yeah. If it was an alien from the movie Aliens, then no, no I, I would not deal with that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
That one I would run from. Yeah, really <laughs> I fast. I would try to kill it. <laughs> Get the hell away. I would hide from that one. Get the hell away from that one. Yeah, oh, that one's nasty, dude. They mostly come out at night. Mostly. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's a story. Um, okay. And this, I guess, probably good news for Beetle and uh, maybe other folks. I, I don't know, but um, probably due to bad news for lots of other people. I don't know okay. that either. Uh, but here it is. It's on ZeroHedge.com. Uh, mobile Home Frenzy. RV shipments soar 43% in November. So, uh, yeah, it's America's RV craze continues. Uh, according to the RV Industry Association Survey of North American Manufacturers, all towable RV shipments soared 46.3% in November from 38,485, uh, uh, oh, 238,045 from 26,000. 297 a year earlier. All motorhome shipments rose 20.3% last month from 4,000 or to 4,028 from 3,347. A total RV shipments uh, grew 43.4% in November uh, from 242,513 from 29,644. As Americans can no longer afford to buy stationary homes, they are increasing. Right. Increasingly move, moving to mobile variants, or perhaps they just want to be able to scatter at a moment's notice. And so far this year, through November, all towable RV shipments totaled 353,109, uh, compared to 334,792 from the previous period. 5.5% uh, year-over-year growth. So um, that, that's really all there is to that. It's, uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of crazy, kind of crazy. I mean, I get it. I really do, because a house is a lot of work. Uh, well, that, and I mean, if you want to get the fuck out of Dodge, then... Uh, it's hard, because you, it's like an anchor. Right, right. It is. It's like an anchor, and you have to maintain it, or else it will be a piece of crap, and then it will be worth not as much if you want to sell it. Yeah. So, um... So hit the road, Jack. <laughs> and don't you come back no more, no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> so, Grim, I was going to say, like I said, do you remember a year being this sucky at all? Like you said, it wasn't that much different for you, but really, and which is good. Yeah. Because besides the book, but remember that story you had about an old man? The old what? The old man at the post office that fucking, oh, right. fucking passed out and shit. And you're like, dude, don't wear that mask. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> did you have to help him do his car or something? Oh, I did. I had to get him up. I had to catch him, and then I had to pick him up off the floor. And, and he was just teetering. He was in bad shape. Like, you, good thing you were watching and were there to catch him. Well, he was the next guy in front of me, so. He could have uh, cracked his head over or something. Oh, yeah, he could have been dead right there. You know, we don't know. Um, but, uh, whatever. I saved his life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, would that normally, I mean, so that's something that's No, no, because, <laughs> well, you know, it, it, who knows what an old guy's going to do, but wearing and that. You, right, but you knew he had that mask on and he was super old, right? Yeah. And I can tell, like, you probably said, were thinking, oh, this guy's wearing a mask and he's super fucking old. <laughs> yeah, and he was, he was a pretty good sized guy, too. He's about my size, you know. Wow, um, wow. So I, it was like, whoa. Oh, he wasn't, like, your size? Yeah, yeah, he was big. Oh, I'm picturing this, like, frail little man. <laughs> no, he was, he, was, he was a big, you know, barrel-chested dude. Oh, and, my God, uh, you're yeah. lucky he was, he was lucky you were there. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, if somebody else, if somebody else was right there, they probably would have caught him, too, but. Like, a, I probably would not have been able to catch the dude. Yeah. Like, I probably wouldn't have, but thank God you were, I mean, thank goodness you were there, because. You know, but then he didn't listen to you when no, or actively, no, yeah. no, he's too programmed with I mean, he didn't really say anything. He just, right, uh, he was kind of dazed and confused. Yeah, he just kind of, just kind of let he me. Drive, he was driving. He, though, he right? was driving. He was yeah, serious thought. <laughs> yeah, I got him into his car and, and he just nodded his head. He was okay. You all right? No. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. All right, we got yeah, to. Our... Been... Oh, okay. Go ahead. 
Well, I was just saying, we got to do our last set, but say whatever you're going to Okay, let's do that. All right. All righty. All right. You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch. We're going to do something that will uh, warm up your heart. This one's called You're a Mean <laughs> Black Betty. Christopher Amoroso covering Black Betty there. Before that, Reverend Peyton's big damn band. Do it run, Rudolph, run. Yeah, Breezy on the drums. Imagine that. And we Before that, we had Dion, you know it's Christmas, with Big Joe Bonamassa. And we kicked it off there with Gary Hoey doing Mr. Grinch. Oh, man, a full night of X-Mass tunes. Hopefully you enjoyed them all. Hopefully you all had a good Christmas. And uh, it's over. No more Christmas tunes until a year, another year, before you, before we subject you to any more Christmas tunes. <laughs> I'm sure many of you are happy about that. Uh, anyway, uh, I had a good time, fun playing them. I, I, I don't really, I don't play Christmas tunes outside of like a week within Christmas, before Christmas. Uh so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anyway, so it was all fun. It's all good. Um, <laughs> don't forget, next week our show will be on Thursday night. Thursday night. Uh, not Friday night. On New Year's Eve, we'll be doing our annual prediction show. So get your predictions in. Tune in for the show next Thursday night uh, at this, uh, you know, same time and all that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it'll be great. Have a good weekend, everybody. Um, try and stay away from people in RVs, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know. Where, oh, sorry, Graham. Sorry, Graham. Um, but, I didn't mean to, like, ignore you. That's uh, all right. Busy chatting. But, uh, anyway, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Yes, um, stay away from RVs and people. Yes. Good advice. And, R- and RV people. What? <laughs> and RV people. <laughs> Any people, right? No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Isn't that your your theory? Yeah, it is. Anyway, All right, uh, thanks everyone. Hope you had a good, happy, happy, whatever. All right, have a great weekend. And yeah. um, next Thursday, remember New Year's Eve. We'll, we're doing Freakers on New Year's Eve. Right, right. So please tune in if you can. Should be a good time. See y'all in the chat. Yep. Peace. 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 <laughs>